Angela's a brand new product. They're suspected of causing birth defects. They changed the name, that's all. There's nothing between me and Alistair. You don't have to say a thing, do you? But it certainly seems that Jasmine thinks Alistair has his sights set elsewhere. I've warned you to stay out of the firing range. <laughs> Nunnery, you've got to be joking. Listen, why don't we share the taxi? You can tell me all about it. <sighs> oh, for God's sake, Maxine. Take a pill or something. Oh, it's the gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition, but someone must be greed. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the ice cream on the cake. Love. You really ought to tell the police. Oh, if I'd bother to report the ravings of every lunatic in this town, they'd be working overtime. Now, where is my nail varnish? What nail varnish? The E. Saint Laurent one that is on your toenails. Oh, that one. Could be on my dressing table. Hmm. Well, if anyone sent me anything like that, I'd freak. Well, that is the difference between you and me, my dear. I am older and wiser, and I am all alone in this world. I fight my own battles. One day you'll understand. Or maybe you won't. After all, you are a red fern, like your father. What's he got to do with it? Nothing. This person, how do you know they're not going to do something serious? Because they're cowards. They wouldn't dare. Frankly, I am more worried about you getting to school on time. You're a model child now, remember? Cost your grandmother enough. I'll get there. Oh, and don't forget you're having lunch with her today. All right. Of course, being your father's daughter, you can always be relied on when the chips are down. Right, Chelsea. What are you on about? Loyalty. An old-fashioned little word that means so much. <laughs> come on. Oh. You're going to have to try harder than that. Oh, come on, Campbell. You said you had something for me. Ah, uh, yes, but what are you going to give me? Herpes simplex, if you're lucky. Oh, all right. Angela, is that all? Well, you're the connoisseur around here. Thought you might like to try them out. I suppose they're worth a go. What for? As it is, you've rattled when you walk. They guarantee you'll lose a stone a month if you stick to the program. God, I could do with it. I'm so fat at the moment. I wouldn't let Maxine see you giving them away all over the place. She doesn't like drugs, and she's still not 100% on this campaign, either. Don't you worry about Maxine. She'll come around when she sees the bucks these people are wielding. Oh, dear, oh, dear. In case it somehow escaped you, Maxine's holding a large portion of the magazine for this private school story. And here you sit doing Jane's job for her. I just said I'd give her a few ideas. Look, Gemma, God only knows how much this fiasco is costing. But at a time like this... One does not play agony, Aunt. All right? Sorry. So am I. I thought you had more sense. Is this woman annoying you? Merely trying to explain to Gemma that your ex-wife doesn't need a permanent assistant to save her from the trouble of doing her own work. Well, it's not Jane's fault. Ten ways to get your man back. Hm. Good title, that. In real life, as in fiction, eh, Campbell? Mr. Thorne, Mum's already gone. I know. I have to be going myself, or I'll be late for school. No, I won't keep you a minute. I just wanted to pass on my gratitude over the school story. Well, I've been thinking about that. Oh, your information was most helpful. Just the sort of thing we needed to get the fur flying. Look, I probably shouldn't have even talked to you. Chelsea, on the contrary. We're going to feature your contributions prominently. I actually called round to see whether there was anything I could offer. As payment, if you like. Clothes, tickets. You're not going to put my name on it. Oh, yes. You can't. Why ever not? I've only just got out of trouble. Mum will kill me. Well, you should have thought of that before you started skiting, then, shouldn't you? 
Mr. Thorne, I don't know why you're doing this, but if my name goes on that article, it'll ruin this family. Oh, we couldn't have the mighty Redferns ruined now, could we? <laughs> but you see, Chelsea, I've got a magazine to put out. And if I agree to your request, then that particular story loses something. Something that has to be picked up somewhere else. Do you see that? But will you take my name off? Okay. Promise? But only on one condition. It looks beautiful. They've done a great job. I hope Cara likes it. And to think that when Chelsea grew out of it, I very nearly decided to sell. You didn't, did you? Well, I came near to it. But Bryce and you had slept in it, and then Alastair and Chelsea. In the end, I was just too sentimental. It's hard to imagine, isn't it, after all these years? I'd forgotten about those two o'clock feeds. You were never the most enthusiastic father, Brad, as I remember. This time it'll be different. At least I know what to expect. I do wish you'd persuade Caro to take more rest. It may sound old-fashioned, but it's not good for her to go rushing around like this. Neither is it any good for you, for that matter. Me? Hey, I'm not pregnant. Oh, don't be silly, Brad. You know what I mean. All right, I know I've been working hard, but this Angela contract's very important to me, Mum, and to my firm. One big contract like this will really put us on the map. You've got to crack the first one. Well, you know what it's like. Caro doesn't seem too keen on this Angela stuff. Ah, it's just some bad publicity she's read. The sort of thing they don't want from my firm. Greg, could I have a word with you, please? Sure. What can I do for you? I just want to discuss with you some changes I've got in mind here. Time for a new system, I think. Somewhere we can keep proper track of our stock, for example. The system here's been pretty slack. Wouldn't you agree? I wouldn't know. I think you would. I'm not paid to think, Mrs. Redfern. I'm paid to do a job. And I'm telling you there will be changes to that job. All right? Oh, I see. You're telling me. I thought you said you wanted to discuss things. But that wouldn't really be your style now, would it, Mrs. Redfern? Very well, then. I'm telling you. Relax, Mrs. Redfern. You don't like me. I'm not your type. But it's not the end of the world. I don't like you much either, as it happens. But the main difference in this restaurant between you and me is this. I work here for our living, and you work here because you need a hobby. You're just a little bit too young for bridge, and a little bit too pretty for basket weaving. Right. There's no need to be offensive. Oh, but I find your implication that I'm ripping off this restaurant pretty offensive, Mrs. Redfern. We'll start with the storeroom keys. Thank you. Any time. Oh, no. Mm. It's getting worse. We should call the police. We must have everything checked that comes into the office by courier from now on. I can do without that in my life. I've got better things to think about. Who on earth can be doing this? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Rex. Rex Thorne? Why? Well, why send me a wreath of black flowers on the launch day of Electra? If that isn't the workings of a sick mind, I don't know what but is. from that to this? Jealousy. Rex is jealous of anyone with talent, which in his case is most of the animal kingdom. <sighs> is Rex Thorne there, please? You won't win a slanging match with him. He isn't. How pleasant for you. No, no messages. You're right. I mustn't descend into the gutter with him. Well, what's on the agenda for today? We have the meeting with Brad and Campbell this morning about the Angela contract. <laughs> That's going to be fun. You've made up your mind then? Well, let's say I've been doing a little homework, and I have discovered one or two things that Brad is not going to like. Once again, my ex-husband is showing his usual lack of business acumen. What else? I'm worried about Jane. She's been behaving very strangely lately. Oh. She's been behaving strangely ever since Campbell threw her out. I don't understand why. I mean, she should realize she's been on to a lucky streak. She's getting worse, even by her standards. Maybe she should take some time off. I am her employer, not her psychiatrist. Besides, she's got a column to write, and if that doesn't cure her, I don't know what will. Ten ways to win back your man? Maybe she'll find that one of them works. See you later.
can I help you? Mrs. Redfern, I phoned earlier. Yes. This'll do. It's a very special occasion, Fulham. I want everything to be just right. Good. Excuse me. Oh, oh it's you. Rex. Fancy that. I was just talking about you this morning. Really? Hmm. I'm flattered, but why? Somebody delivered a most unusual present to me last night, and for some reason it reminded me of you. You haven't started sending me gifts, have you, and forgotten to put in the card? Oh, you have so many admirers, Maxine. I'm only one among thousands. Yes, but I'm sure your signature must be unmistakable. If I do you a good turn, I'll be only too happy to take the credit. Don't step on my toes, Rex, will you? I've got no desire to get close enough. Last year, isn't it? I've got a special lunch on today. I thought I'd better make an effort. Do you think Campbell would like them? That Drongo? He wouldn't even notice them unless they were shaped like dollar signs. It's our wedding anniversary. It's him I'm having lunch with. Yeah, well, if you're going to lose those earrings, it'll cost you 50 bucks. I had them sent over from Australia. Jane? Sorry, I didn't have as much time as I would have liked on some of these ideas. What ideas are these? See your column. No, you really shouldn't have bothered. I've got everything under control. Hello, darling. Hey. I said hello. Oh, hello. Remember what today is? Thursday. It's our wedding anniversary. I'm taking you to lunch. Oh, you are? I've booked a table at Al's Diner, just the two of us. We haven't talked to each other for ages, Campbell. So we're going to talk and have lunch like we did in the old days. Yeah, well, I'm pretty busy. You always used to have time for me, no matter how busy you were, remember? That was a long time ago, Jane. But you must come. It's our wedding anniversary. I'll see you there, one o'clock. One o'clock? Don't be late. I've got a surprise for you. Yeah, fine. See you there. I like your style, kid. Got some aspic for his guacamole? Bradley! In a better mood this morning, I hope. Look, Maxine, about last night. Oh, I... that. I quite understand. <laughs> I forget that you're not on your own anymore. I just think that I can call you up whenever I want to, like the good old days. It was after midnight. We were both asleep. Look, you don't have to explain anything to me. Cara must be feeling terribly insecure in her fragile state. The last thing she wants is your ex-wife ringing up all hours of the day and night. I don't know what came over me. I'm glad you decided to take it like that, Maxine. Darling, the last thing I want to do is to cause you any unhappiness. I wish you'd understand that. It's strange to think that just a few weeks before the wedding, you and I... I'm sorry about that, Maxine. Don't be sorry. We have fun. It certainly wasn't anything more than that. Look, why doesn't everybody get off my back about poor Jane? She's obviously got herself together enough to bail me up out there and demand that I have lunch with her. I'm concerned, that's all. Well, good on you. But don't drag me into it. She's a big girl now, and she most certainly isn't my problem anymore. Sorry, did I keep you waiting? Ah, so this is Angela. Yes, they've just finalised the packaging. Well, as you can see, it's an upmarket concept aimed at the fashion-conscious younger woman. The target cut-off age is at 40. Good. What else do we know about it? That it works. And more to the point, they pay their bills. Isn't that right, Brad? Goodness me, we need the money. And if, as you say, it really works, well, there isn't much to talk about, is there? Brad, you seem to have got yourself a winner this time. Can I have a look at the contract? Hmm. Well, it certainly is a large amount of money, no doubt about that. And who am I to stand in the way of Redfern public relations?
There is one thing. I know it might not be important, but I, I do wonder about the legal hassles. What do you think, Bridget? I don't know. Look, there's nothing been proven yet. What legal hassles? On second thoughts, I really think that you ought to talk this over with Carla Jameson, Brad. We need a lawyer's mind on this problem. You want me to see Carla? I think you should. Right away. How are you? Bad news. Strange news. Your mother's just asked me to lunch. What's Maxine up to, I wonder? I doubt whether she just wants to be sociable. Maybe she decided to forgive you for not inviting her to your wedding. I doubt it. Strangest thing is I said I'd go. One o'clock at the brasserie. Well, cheer up. She can't eat you. That may not stop her trying. <laughs> It's lovely, Jane. Must have cost a fortune. He's always wanted one, but I used to say it was too extravagant. You're not giving this to Campbell. Anniversary present. Two years. But, Jane, you're not... Together. I know things haven't been going so well between us, but that's going to change. This separation's hurting him as much as it's hurting me, I can tell. You can't go through as much as we've been through together without it meaning something. It may be all over, Jane. Once, maybe. But I think that's all in the past. You'll see, Gemma, it's getting better. It really is. I really don't get on the sights often enough, you know. When Douglas was running the company, you couldn't keep me away. About these papers you wanted me to sign? Plenty of time for that. Just take a look at that view, will you? It looks nice, Grandma. Nice? Is that all you can say? That view is going to make a pretty penny for this company, you know. And don't you forget, it's you that we're building it for. Don't think I'm not grateful, Grandma. I'm just worried about something, that's all. Anything I can help with? Nothing important. Well, I was going to show you the shopping complex, too, but maybe we better have some lunch first, eh? That's what grandmothers are here for, you know. The little trivial things that other people don't have time for. Grandma, is it right to do something you don't really want to do if it means protecting the family? Is there an example attached to that question? Just something. Nothing serious or anything. Families are very important, Chelsea. I know. Well, I think you'd better carefully consider where your true loyalties lie, whether it's with the family or somewhere else. With my family, of course. Of course. You're a red fern. We're all in business together. We all help each other. We make sacrifices for each other, too. Is that any help? Yes, Grandma. Could be that Brad just hasn't done his homework here, Carla. In any case, I'd like you to help him sort it out right away. Right. Well, I'm pretty fully booked today. Oh, I know what a busy law office is like, believe me. I know. What about lunch today? Are you free? Um, yes, but... I've uh, uh, booked myself a table at the uh, brasserie. Why don't you take it with Brad? Well, what about you? Oh, it's far more important that you meet with Brad. Charge it to my account and have yourselves a good time. I shall make sure that he meets you there about 12.30. Right. Oh, by the way, Gemma, yeah. I had a look at those ideas of yours. And? Not really good enough, I'm afraid. Oh. I hope you won't take it to heart, but you're just a beginner in this business. You've got to expect to take a few years before you catch up with experienced people like me. But thanks for trying, kid. Oh, it doesn't matter. They were just off the top of my head. Yes, that was the trouble. They were a little facile. Facile? <laughs> oh, I love it. This from a woman with the intellectual depth of a puddle. What's facile mean? Glib, darling. I thought her column was meant to be glib. Facile. It's all right for you. I happen to have worked pretty hard on those ideas. Yeah, too hard. What for? She's been turning out the same old sludge for years. Years of experience. You heard her. Oh, that sounds more like Campbell. Old octopus hands. Hands of an octopus. Brain of a squid. Makes you wonder where the dignity is in having your heart broken by a sleazeball like that. You guys are terrible.
Bring us back a few hot tips from the opposition, eh, Caro? Spy out the lay of the land for us. If we're going to be partners, you might as well start on industrial secrets like uh, who does their hollandaise. Who says we're going to be partners, Alastair? I wouldn't jump to any conclusions if I were you. For a start, I wouldn't go into partnership with anybody who'd hire staff like that. Greg? Oh, come on, he's harmless enough. And he looks good. Gives the girl something to look at. I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to find a more pleasant view. Oh, you're pretty hard on the guy. Well, that's the way I am when it comes to business. And if you're not, then perhaps we wouldn't work so well together after all. You thought about that? Hi, Mr. Shaw, table for three. Right here. I'm afraid this table's already booked. Unbook it, then. I wish I could, Jane. Look, but... Alistair, it's really important. I'm meeting my husband. It's our wedding anniversary. Sort of reconciliation, you know? All right. Just this once. You want to order something? No, thanks. He won't be long. Hmm. Caro, I'm so sorry I'm late. I know what it's like hanging around, being pregnant and feeling like nothing on earth. I'm feeling fine, Maxine. Shall we go? Well, I think you're being very sensible. In my opinion, the problems of pregnancy are all in the mind. Of course, I worked right up until I had mine. I know you're an exemplary mother. I'm so glad you could come. I really wanted to make it up to you. Our last meeting was most unfortunate. Oh, yes. I fainted. I'd quite forgotten about that. Well, now we can have a good tete-a-tete -tete and really get to know each other. I think we should be friends. I see absolutely no point in bearing grudges. The milk of human kindness? Why not? I'd like to get to know you as well as I know Brad. This used to be one of our most favourite restaurants. It's so lovely going to a restaurant full of memories. I remember... <gasps> Whoops! There's something the matter. I know, it's too crowded. It'll make you most somewhere. But I'm fine. Carol, I really think we should go to another restaurant. should want to have lunch with me. I didn't know that he was seeing Carter again. I'm sure there's a perfectly rational explanation as to why Brad is having lunch with that woman. Of course there is. I'm sorry. The past caught up with me. I overreacted. Shall we go up there again? No. No, perhaps not. You're right. My bother. Public scenes are so tacky. I'm sure it's all perfectly innocent. Carla Jameson just happens to be one of the flings he had when we were married. Let us forget about lunch, Maxine. There was a reason why I wanted to see you today, and it's not what you think. No. I wanted to reassure you. Just because I happen to ring up Brad at unusual hours doesn't mean I'm making a claim on him. Maxine, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about last night. There was a call. Brad hung up on me. It was such a cruel thing to do. I was really upset when I rang up last night, and I, I was appalled that he had so little compassion. I've always known that Brad was self-centered. I can accept that. This new heartlessness... I feel sorry for you, Carl. I'm beginning to think Brad hasn't got a heart at all. Watch him. The past is never far away. I don't see why Maxine couldn't have told me this before. I suppose she thought I should be the one to tell you, considering it's a legal problem. <laughs> it's a load of trumped-up rubbish. It's a perfectly respectable firm. They've got hundreds of drugs on the market. And there's never been a suggestion of a scandal. Until now. I hate to say this, Brad, but do you think it's possible that they came to you with Angela because none of the bigger firms would be prepared to handle it? I knew it. I can hear Maxine's voice, loud and clear. So I'm not up to it, eh? I'll take on dangerous drugs and hock them to an unsuspecting public because I'm too inefficient to check them out. Oh, don't you said anything like that. 
investigation in Washington has only just begun. You couldn't be expected to know. No. I can see Maxine sitting there with a grin from ear to ear. Maxine was actually very concerned that she might hurt you. That's why she asked me to speak to you. Oh, showing her finer feelings, eh? It's always a sign that Maxine's in for the kill. A tin pot drug survey fueled by a whole heap of speculation. And a hundred deformed children, Brad. I'd like to see you argue with that. Leave her alone, Magda. Oh, we've got to have something to read. Anyway, I'm dying to find out how to get my man back. You mean you had one? Oh, I think so. They're all the same, though, aren't they? Oh, this is great stuff. She says true love still triumphs in the modern world, so long as we submit. Someone pass the paper towels. She can't be serious. Unfortunately, she is. It's the way she thinks. The number of times I've found her bawling in the ladies' room. Why? I mean, she's attractive, isn't she? She's successful, she's talented. It's Campbell, Al Creepo. She was sort of okay until he appeared on the scene. Mm. And she married him. I tried to warn her. What can you say? He made her dye her hair blonde once. She ended up looking like a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there were all those other women. How many on the honeymoon? Just the redhead from the health food shop. She wasn't allowed to be jealous, though. Oh, no. He was going to turn her into the perfect woman. Remember that wall-to-wall -wall bed and that flat of his? <laughs> Do I what? He tried to drag me into it and I lost a contact lens. <laughs> and Jane put up with all of this. Of course. Campbell wanted her to be a swinger. And she was too infatuated and too weak to say no. The only trouble was she got pregnant. Swingers don't get pregnant. It's against the rules. She didn't tell him, though, for ages. But one day he came home and found her throwing up in the bathroom. So he sent her off to the abortion clinic. She went very strange after that. A terrible story. Oh, but that wasn't the end of it, was it? Then she took the sleeping pills. Not enough of them, of course. Stomach pump yet again. I don't know. Portrait of a modern marriage. <laughs> she really wanted a kid. Oh, but Campbell's far too young to be a father. After all, he's only got the mental age of a ten-year-old. Right, Campbell? What are you on about? The dark space between your ears, darling. Lunch over already, Campbell. What lunch? Your lunch with Jane. It's your wedding anniversary. Oh, I forgot. No. Oh, you really are the scum of the earth. Well, get off my back, will you? It's not a crime to forget anything. <laughs> God, women. <gasps> What's so funny? You know, in a perverse sort of way, they almost deserve each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you again. Look, if you want to order something, you better make it now. The kitchen will be closing down in a minute. Can you believe it? Two hours at that table and I've been turning people away all lunchtime. What do you want to bet? She never even left a tip. Well, that's fine by me. That's it. I finished. Sure. I should get a pretty good cover shot out of this. You're what they call a natural. You won't be able to recognize me. On oh, my word, as a gentleman. How'd it go? I suppose you could say it was very educational. Tanya, can you get me the photo file on Brad, please? It's under R for Redfern. Where's Jane? She's not back from lunch yet. Tell her I want to see her when she comes in, will you please?
Could you take that down to Al's diner for me, please? I'll take it for you. I'm going past the end. I'll pick up your dry cleaning on the way. OK, Gemma? Thanks. Ow. Forget it, Jane. He's a crud. He forgot. Could have happened to anybody. Jane, I've been thinking, maybe you should come round to my place, have a meal. We could talk about things. Jane, can I see you for a moment? I have just read some appalling journalism. It was your copy, Jane. What I read that came out of your typewriter was some of the most snivelling, sexist rubbish it has ever been my misfortune to see. Now, tell me the truth, Jane. This is your little attempt at satire, isn't it? Oh, you disappoint me. I thought you might have some amusing motive for writing such puerile nonsense. The subject of your feature is supposed to be how to get your man back not how to grovel on the ground and get your head kicked in by a sadist. Our readers are not masochists. They do not consider themselves to be human dish rags. I thought it was all right. You know, I used to think you had it in you. I used to think you had wit, talent and humor. And I didn't realize I was wrong. I'm afraid the gloss has outgrown you. Perhaps if I had a holiday. You can get your check at the pay office tomorrow. We will be dispensing with your services. You can go now. Jane? I have to tidy things up. Would you mind telling us what the hell's going on? Ask her. She finally got what she wanted. What are you going on about? You can cut the innocent act with me, goody two-shoes. She's been after my job ever since she came here. Well, now she's got it. Maxine's given me the sack. Congratulations. You make me want to puke. Come round and see me sometime, eh? Well, I may take you up on that. And believe me, it'll be a visit you'll never forget. Okay, then we'll see you at eight. Bye. Hello, darling. Jasmine. Mm. I was going to give you a call later, see if you felt like doing something tonight. Well, if you're not going to be too tired or anything. She'll be through here around midnight. We'll find out then. Mm. Okay. Cara, Maxine wanted me to give you this. Mustache. Bye. <sighs> now, what did I line myself up like that for? Because she's a gorgeous-looking girl and she's obviously crazy about you. Yeah. And she's starting to get a bit pushy. Maybe she was right. I feel terrible. I feel lousy myself. I didn't realize she'd gone completely round the twist. I'm sure we all did everything we could. Her work just hasn't been up to standard. 
Maybe I did help to get her sacked. Writing that stuff for her. I didn't know. This had been happening for a long while before you came. Jane's one of life's sacrificial lambs. And it's not pretty when you see the blood. She would have been okay if it wasn't for that horrible Mr. Wright. Well, no, even without the charming Campbell, should have found another Mr. Wrong. Women like her always do. They're addicted to misery. I hate to break up your little party, Magda, but you and Gemma are costing me thousands while you socialise. You are working today? Yes, Maxine. Good. Ten bucks for that. They said they couldn't get the state out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but they couldn't. <gasps> She's not sending you incriminating photographs now, is she? Oh. I thought that'd be a bit over the top even for my mother. I saw your father having lunch with her today, as it happens. I wouldn't worry about Carla Jamison. She only lasted about three months anyway, and that was years ago. She's very attractive. They all were. She's just one of a long line of them. Don't worry about it. Can't help wondering sometimes if I'm not just another in the long line myself. Oh, give it a rest. Max is just playing head games. If I started worrying about that sort of thing, I'd never be able to let him out of my sight, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Hmm. Your place or mine? Oh, I've got a very urgent meeting that's going to keep me out until late. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm dying for a drink. I've had a long and tacky day. Mm, me too. Mm. Oh, darling, there's plenty of time for that later. Well, let's go. <sighs> Gemma, Magda, I'd like your copy on my desk first thing in the morning. Good night. Good night, Good night all. Good night. Good night. Ah, young love. I remember it well. I wish you were coming to this fashion parade with me. I hate going to these things on my own. Sorry, I'm going to be here for hours. I might not be home tonight. I'm meeting Alistair after the show. Oh, fine. I'd rather go back to his place, I think. He always stares at you all the time. He does not. I've seen him looking at you. It's lucky you've got Mark or I'd start to worry. <sighs> Don't be silly. Mm. You may not be able to see it, but I do. I see. Young Mr. Redfern doesn't waste any time, does he? Look, he's Jasmine's boyfriend. It's all in her imagination. I never said it wasn't. Have fun now. Hi, Kari. See him on time for a change. We're hoping for a quiet night. You might even get home early. Oh. Good evening. Hi. On no happy face? Oh, I am really in it this time. Well, this wouldn't have anything to do with Sexy Rexy, would it? I saw him chatting you up the other night. Sexy? That man's a creep. He was going to plaster my name all over the next electorate just because I talked to him about school. Oh, yeah? How did you get out of that one? I let him put me on the cover. Oh, yes. Very clever. You can't tell who it is. I've got my face covered. Your mother won't like it. Oh, she will never find out. Will she? Well, what else could I do? If I had my name all through it, it would be worse. Sure looks like poor Chelsea got set up. Oh, get off my back. Angela. Take two every four hours. Gemma? Still at the office. She had to finish that private schools thing she's doing. I thought I'd be able to take her out to dinner. Don't think so. Well, how about her flatmate instead? <laughs> I'm fasting this week. Just apples and water. And pills? Oh, them. They're for when I can't sleep. These are to help you wake up in the morning. They're all legal. There's nothing wrong in having them. Yeah, maybe so, but you don't need them. Yeah, maybe I do. 
you're not eating, and you're not sleeping. And you need pills to keep you going. It doesn't seem to me you're in very good shape. Leave me alone, will you? You're not my doctor. If you were my patient, I'd worry about you. I'm all right. Thank you very much. I'd better go look for Gemma. I think you'd better. The bassinet's beautiful, Brad. It was very kind of you. It was Olivia's idea. Tired. Mm. Had a hard day? Difficult. We're supposed to be going to dinner, you know. Oh, I'd forgotten. Or do we have to? Well, they made the arrangement two weeks ago. We can hardly back out now. <laughs> Fred, I... Hmm? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You're not working too hard at that restaurant, are you? I guess I never realised pregnancy was quite so exhausting. You know you don't have to work. Take a couple of days off. And lie around for the next six months doing nothing. No thanks. I just don't want anything to happen to you. It won't. Oh, come on now. There's nothing unusual about being tired when you're pregnant. OK. How was your day? Oh, all right, I suppose. Had a bit of trouble with the deal I'm working on. Oh? Do you want to talk about it? No. It wouldn't interest you. Half an hour to get ready, all right? Look, I don't want to go on my own. Why not? I'm sure you'd have a perfectly nice time. Is something the matter? No. Why do you ask? Nothing. Mark, you're not supposed to be here till the weekend. <laughs> Don't look so disappointed. Oh, sorry. I've come to take you to dinner. I can't. I've got to finish this. Well, how long is it going to take? Hours at the rate I'm going. I can't seem to get it right. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll just wait here and read for a while. And if you finish in time, we'll find somewhere that's open late. How about that? I can't, honestly. Oh. You should have rung me first. You picked about the worst day you could have. Anything you want to tell me about? Oh, nothing. It's just Jane who works here. She got the sack and she said it was all my fault. Was it? I don't know. I was just trying to help and I ended up feeling like I was to blame. Anyway, she's out now. That's what happens when you don't deliver the goods. The real world's not a very nice place, is it? It's better than pie in the sky. You think that's what I believe in? <laughs> You're not impressed by the business world, let's face it. You look down your nose at it. Unlike some other people you've started to look up to. If by that you mean Alistair Redfern, please don't start this again. Why not? You seem to think he's got all the answers. That's a gross exaggeration. In any case, there was a time when you didn't have such a high and mighty attitude to money that he happens to remember. He's a liar. He was a liar then. He hasn't changed. Oh, come on, Gemma. You know I'd never steal. Changed, Emma. Maybe. It's my fault, isn't it? What? What do you mean, your fault? Look, I'm sorry. I haven't been around when you needed me. It's been hard for you coming to the city into a job you really wanted. I should be able to come with you, support you. I'm a big girl now, Mark. It's all right. I shouldn't argue with you. You're under a lot of strain. Oh, for God's sake, just leave me alone. It's all right. It's out of line. Talk when you're ready. Any better at this hour of night. This is done. Thanks for coming in. You look terrible. Had a lousy day, didn't you? Didn't get any better. Mark's in town. 
He came in to take me out to dinner and I ended up being pretty horrible to him. You need a drink. Come on. Campbell's shouting. What's the occasion? His wedding anniversary. Killing me. It's been a long day. <sighs> it has. Well, this is the last of my five star cognac. <sighs> Hope you're going to appreciate it. I'm sure I will. There. Thank you. What's that? Oh, I forgot to tell Chelsea not to accept any courier mail. No, no, don't touch it. I'll throw it away. <coughs> don't be silly. I I'd rather you didn't. Rex keeps sending me these awful things. It's his idea of a joke, only it's wearing a bit thin. Well, it's hardly likely to be a bomb, is it? Jane wrote this afternoon. Now that you've ripped out my heart, keep it. What the hell is that supposed to mean? and mirror glass, the city's on the main. The devil takes the hindmost and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you swallow a lie, I won't think I say no. 